Hello everybody and welcome once again to Mechanism 110. Now today I'm going to start the tier 3 processing for the ore processing. And there's quite a few bits and pieces to do with this. And what I've done is I've put up some signs here. Working backwards from the beginning here. So the first thing we need is where the ores go into is the chemical injection chamber. And that requires hydrogen chloride, which is a gas, I think, maybe a liquid. And from that, we also need a chemical infuser that's taking hydrogen on one side and chlorine from the other. Uh, we're making chlorine from the electrolytic separator from brine. Now, in the middle here, I'm pl planning to put a tank to store brine. Usually, you don't end up with very much when you're actually processing stuff. And here we need the thermal evaporation plant, which used to be called the salination plant. And that requires water, so we need a water pump. So let's start by putting in here the tank. Now, I, the one I set up there was for five, but I'm only going to plan to do three. So let's come up here and get the parts next episode. So this is for the tank here, and we'll also need some cabling and piping and stuff like that and probably some speed upgrades for the pump and probably some energy upgrades for the pump as well fellas yeah i think this will do let's take most of these bits and i've actually prepared some brine anyway just to see how things work take these two as well now the recipes for these are fairly straightforward let's have a look at the recipes i would sort the stuff first of all right there we go so for the dynamic tank, the recipe for that is stealing it around a bucket and that produces four tank components. And the glass for structural glass, I think is generally you can use this almost everywhere on all of on all of the things. So let's have a look at the recipe for this. That's a steel around glass block. And for the salination or thermal evaporation. This is this recipe changed from the previous time. So the recipe for that is copper ingots, full steel around a copper ingot. So it may well work with glass as well. We'll try that and see if it does work. I think we have enough time in this episode to do at least set up this stuff. I don't think it's worthwhile making it. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is to knock out these components here. So let's have a look. Let's, move, oh, here, let's use the configurator and it's set to range mode, that's good. So I'm probably going to have to knock away these so I can get some space to do the rest of it. So let's knock this one. Nah, let's create a chest first of all. I want somewhere to put this stuff. What about my personal chest here? Was that full? No, nah, that's pretty empty. Let's sort that and put that down here. Now I've put back the pump. So what I want to do now is I want to take these components out of here and put them in, in the right place. So let's put this one here, rinse that off, pick it up, and let's put that in get the right mode. Let's put that here. So that was the bottom one with a switch. Okay, so above that we take this one. I think I've got both those two bits there. I've done the same thing again, haven't I? It doesn't matter. And we have the switch on top of this as well. And then the third one is this one over here. I want to keep them in the order so we can know where the places are. So we'll have to change some of the recipes, but that doesn't matter very much. So it's here, and we'll put the switch on top of it. And then the last thing we want was these chests. This one's got this one's got uh, materials in. I'm going to have to remove those, I think. At least as many as I can. I'm going to put those in the the chests over here. It's a bit far away. I should move this stuff around, which I will do at some stage. So here's my dust chest. That's the gold dust and the steel dust and the Osmine ore dust, and then gold would go down here. I think that's everything. The cats are meowing. She probably can't hear that actually because they're quite quiet. 
and there's a floating torch, so I can pick up that torch. I haven't got my um, jetpack on, let's just turn that on. That peter's up there. So now let's get rid of this chest. We've now still got some more stuff to bring out of this. And this chest has also got stuff in it. Probably should have started to clear this away before I started, never mind. What I'm going to do is put these into this chest here. And take the yours over here. So do we have some dusts and an emerald? And I think that will do for this. So let's just tear up, tear up these pieces now. I think that was empty, wasn't it? Oh, no, I've still got some more. Put that in this chest over here. So we're still in rage mode, I think. And I don't need this axe. We'll take the, the saw on me and the sword. I can't quite reach. Right, good. So let's start with this tank. I'm going to make a 3x3 three three tank anyway. And I think that we'll set it up like this. What you can do with these tanks is you can set them so that they go below ground as well as above ground. And I think that's not a bad policy, so let's do that first of all. And 3x3 three three I think is the smallest anyway. So what you do is you have to have a solid base. And I think you need all the, all the corners to be solid as well. And the same with the roof. But let's put in here some glass into the corners here. And then we can put the, the roof on top of this. But we also need a valve. So we'll put the valves. We need two valves actually. Let's get these out of the way. And I can't shift right click on these. So you have to bash them. But I do have the valves with me. I prepared those as well. And the recipe for those is, is also fairly straightforward. It's just blocks with a control circuit on it. So let's put the valve down here. Good. Wasn't sure if I could get past the sign, but I can. And here. So now we simply put a lid on this. And we can extend this now in any direction. It must be these are the dynamic tanks. So let's put a sort of a lid here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. That makes a useless tank. My voice is a bit croaky today, sorry about that. So there you see, it went sort of sparkly red when it's actually prepared. So that is now a tank. And then when you right click it here, you can see you have capacity for fluid. And you can put fluid in here. So for example, we can put an, a tank in here that comes out here and it should have some inventory in here. So as you see, 28 buckets produced almost nothing on the scale here. So it can hold a lot of materials. It doesn't actually, it says volume 27. How many buckets that can contain doesn't sort of point it out here from what I can see. So that's the tank built and it's already got some brine in it. So let's remove out of this here, these two sides and put in their place some fluid pipes, which are called mechanical pipes in the 
mechanism. These are elite mechanical parts. Basic mechanical parts will be just fine. So I'm going to put two of these down here like that. Now that won't can that won't put stuff out yet. We'll fix that in a second. So we're going to do the same here as well for Brian again coming in. So let's remove these two. So what we now need to build is the salination plant or the thermal evaporation plant for Brian is the first one we're going to do. And they're going to do a similar sort of thing here too. So I'll knock off these two sides because they're going to be in the way. In fact, what I can do is take away the, the ground from beneath their feet, so to speak. Like that. And then in this place, I'm going to put this um, evaporation plant. So it's the same thing for the evaporation plant, or well, almost the same thing. So we need a base. And what we can do is we can even go down further. But let's start with the just the smallest of the tanks. What I'm planning to do is the smallest of them anyway. So we also need two valves. So we can put the valves here and here. And the recipe for these, by the way, is one advanced control circuit around thermal ev evaporation blocks. And we did that one before, that was copper and steel. In the previous episode, it used to, or the previous versions, it used to be just copper. So let's put that here and here. Now what I'm not sure about is if you can use glass. I think you can use glass like this, but maybe not. Maybe it's colored wrong. So then what you need to do We'll try it, and if it doesn't work, just put in the copper block. So we put the copper down here like this. Actually, I've got this wrong. It's actually a 4x4. Four four. That's no problem. We'll just knock it down a little bit of space over here. So that will just go. This is only one side, you can't, this is not dynamic, so I have to remove this valve, but you do need valves on both sides. One needs to be for water coming in and the other needs to be for um, brine going out. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to test this to see whether it works with, it, with glass or without glass. So we need another block here. Set back a bit. And here, here, here. So now we need another valve, like that, and then the top layer. Now the top layer is an interesting layer, and what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to go up, I'm going to go down. So first of all we put the controller, so the controller needs to be here. Uh, what I should do is, let me just pick that up again, and show you the recipe for this. This time it's five thermal evaporation blocks, one bucket, and two advanced control circuits, and, a, and a, just a pane of glass. And these, of course, are the basic control circuits surrounded by enriched alloy. And these are simply osmium and redstone in the osmium, metallurgic infuser. So that one we've done before anyway. So what we need to do, this needs to go on one of the corners here like this. And then on another corner, we need to basically put the rest of the blocks, but they're slightly different in this case. We need to leave each of the corners free, like this. And what we put in the corners are the advanced, I haven't got them with me, advanced solar panels. Let's go and get some adva the advanced solar panels. And we can put back some of the other blocks as well. So, so we don't need the dynamic tanks anymore. We might need one of those. I'm not 100% sure yet. 
I think that's all we need. I've got some water here. I'm going to take those two buckets of water for the um, water source. We need to do that as well. So what happens is these, and it doesn't matter if they're the wrong way, which way around they go. Look at that, this. And you just put the, the advanced solar panels down. Now, of course, it's night time now, so it doesn't really make, it, make any difference. It's, it's not, they're not going to work to start with anyway. So now if I right click this here, it should say incomplete. So that does mean I do need to remove this. This structural block doesn't work in this. In this. Hopefully I can pick it up, which I can, good. Put down another one of these. And there it went, oof. So we now get, it's now formed. And it's also getting a temperature increase, which is interesting because there's no sunlight at the moment, it's, dark, it's night time. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put some water down. So let's do those, get rid of these. Of course I've moved it one block out now, so I have to move the position slightly. It doesn't make much difference. So we'll start the water source here. So we need um, power as well for this. And what I've got is we're going to use the ordinary solar panels for this, I think. We'll see if that gives enough power or not. Last time it did, so. So we've got two pumps. This one has got, they're both ready. And I think one of these has got upgrades in it, and the other one hasn't. So let's put down one of the pumps, say, uh, here. Let's put down some sunstone, first of all. I don't need to do that with pumps. I can do it the other way. I, on, the, on the top comes out the, the liquid. Actually, let's go down one more layer here. Because I want to bring the pump up. Now, we also need power coming into it. So that's no big deal. So let's get the buckets out here. And put them in here like this one on that corner and then one on this corner so we get a nice steady thing so the power comes in one side and we need to do that so let's just knock off this one here that'll do fine and let's put down some cables for that I don't need the stone anymore I don't think I do need the basic universal cables and we'll put one of those down here like this and another one beside it here Oops. well actually that's fine too yeah because I want to put the pump here so I hope it goes right around if it doesn't I just have to wrench it across to put it in the right place like that and it did connect so I'll now look at this and it's got both power and water that was from before actually upgrades we have this oh we have an energy upgrade so that's maxed out and it's got two speed upgrades in here. So that should be enough for this. So next thing we need to do is to take the mechanical pipe here and then connect that to here like that. And then you can see the water's going straight in here. But the next last thing we need to do is actually give it some power. So here's the solar panel. And we can put, if I don't fall in the water again, we can put that on top here like this. So that's now generating power it says it's daytime that's good so it's generating 100 joules or well, let's have a look at rf 40 rf per tick and this pump here it's got no water in because it's actually already used all of it up and it's filling up this salination tank here so let's look at this so that's going up that's fine and brine is being made here and it's being made fairly quickly too the reason for this is we're in a desert, and in the desert, brines produce faster, the solar panels have much more power. So there's the, that's the temperature. So the temperature will rise up, and the faster the temperature rises, the more brine it's going to produce. But it's a balancing act, actually. So what we now need to do is we need to come along to this machine, to the configurator again, and change it from wrench mode to fluids. Because we need the brine to come out into this tank here like that. So we shift 
right click so it's in the pull mode and as you can see that's now colored up and we should start to be getting some brine in this tank which is fantastic basically that's it so we're probably not getting enough power from one solar panel so we'll look at the pump here and oh, it's got enough power at the moment but no fluid but as soon as I put some more upgrades in here like this let's put another two speed upgrades in you'll probably find it's now using double the amount of power and it's still okay and it's still no fluid but the water should be increasing in here. It's still increasing. So let's put another two speed upgrades in here. And then see how the pump's doing. Now it's dropping down. So let's now get the next solar panel out of the chest here. I think I left it in the chest. And ultimately we'll have to upgrade this even more so one more solar panel here we don't need these thermal evaporation chunk or the or the structural glass anymore uh, we'll keep the tank here with us for the time being and we'll put the second solar panel just beside this one here Because these are small solar panels, they can be next to each other. So now it's doubled the amount of power coming in here. And that's still not enough. Let's have a look. So long as it's keeping up the water into the salination or the evaporation plant, it's fine. So the water is still going up. The temperature is rising still not risen to the top yet because it's still morning if i remember that's yes it's still morning so it's the temperature is rising up and the amount of uh, brine that's being produced should also now it's actually showing so we've got 55 buckets in there now and it's coming up reasonably fast so the next thing we can do is we actually can do this as well you can put an empty tank in here and then take out a tank or you can do it the other way around fill up a tank it's quite neat, isn't it? I might need to do another solar panel, but I won't do that just now. So you see this water's keeping up fine, and the pump's working just fine. So the next thing we need to do is to make another electrolytic separator to produce chlorine. Let's get on and do that. I've got another 10 minutes or so I would like to record, so it makes sense to do this. So what do we need for the electrolytic separator? Oops. Separator. That one. Maybe the only one we need is just four dusts. So iron dust, gold dust, osmium dust, and enriched alloys. We should have plenty of enriched alloys. I've got stacks of these now. And we'll probably need some osmium ingots. And maybe some iron ingots. It's usual stuff. Control circuits likely to need as well. I've forgotten the actual recipe. In dust, say so it was gold. Uh, two osmium, I think, and one iron. Now let's see if that's right. Correct. So the rest is fairly straightforward. I just need some redstone too. The other very frequently used component. Just two of those, wasn't there? So I'm going to put the electrolytic separator here. And you've got to get it the right way round. So I think it faces this way round like that. Good. Of course it's going to need power, which is going to be more of a challenge. We're going to have to take the power down from underneath here. From the back here I've brought power down here. Maybe I can just bring it across down here, carry on a bit. Far away. 
Oh, that's gas. Actually, let's do that anyway. Let's bring the power down here. And figure out how we're going to connect everything up later on. Is it in the wrong mode? No, I just turned to mode because it was in fluids before. Put it back to wrench mode and wrench this away. Running these pipes sometimes is quite an interesting challenge, so see it's here at the moment. And I'm wondering whether to jump the gas or to yes, we'll jump we'll actually jump the, the oxygen I think. So let's remove this one here. And put in here the cable. Like that. In fact, what we can do is remove this one as well. And we'll, we'll put those now. We need some gas. Basic logistics. Basic pressurized tubes. I've only got two. That's a. I need some more of these. So let's just put these down here like this. You see, that's what. Um, does I just need one more? So what have we got in here? Basic pressurized tubes, I think, are these ones. We've got plenty of those. Quick sort. And can I reach this? Hmm. Looks actually a bit tricky still. Okay, I can't reach it. Let's go back to the original, a different idea, and jump the cable over the gap, the pipe, the gas. Excuse me. I, was having a, I think that's the pressurized tube, isn't it? Yes. Okay, let's jump the peg cable over the top of this then. There we go. That'll do, at least for the time being. So now the electrolytic separator here should be getting power which it has great now the next thing we need to do is then to turn this on so we actually get the fluid out of it so we need to go back to fluid mode and shift right click this to be pull and then it should start to pull into here so we're getting the brine in and on one side we're getting sodium on the other side we're getting chlorine So we're going to have to figure out what to do with the sodium. So we're going to have to store these two in some tanks. Let's do that as well. Actually, I will tell you what I am. I'm, I'm a bit too far forward. I should have put a space for a tank in here. No, well, we'll figure that out. Well, I think we've got to choose another, another separator here for the hydrogen coming in here too because I don't want to bring the hydrogen from this side at the back here that's generating the power to here and I'm not exactly sure at the moment what levels of power things are needed so let's have a quick look at that so we'll need some gas tanks I think let's make some of those to start with make some basic ones oh, okay so it's just so it's just redstone osmium for those and it was four for each one so we'll take eight we'll make two gas tanks and we'll upgrade these two gas tanks straight away I know we're going to get quite a lot of gas coming out of here and this is the easiest way to find out which side things are working on as well. So if you put a tank down here like this. In fact, let's put it this way around. Because that's the exit point, that red dot. So this is getting chlorine. So the sodium is coming in the wrong way. That's a bit of a pain, actually. So what I'm going to have to do is to rotate this machine around maybe put the power in at the top 
Because I don't really want to block this area with these boxes. See, the sodium is now full. So what we can do with the sodium is we can put the other gas tank down here. Let's put it this way around. So that's full of brine, and it's actually full of things. We haven't actually got any upgrades in this yet. Let's make sure that we put some energy upgrades in, at least. I'm right, the energy is gold, so let's get some energy upgrades in here. And glass we need, yes. We need 16 glass, don't we, to each? Don't think we need speed at the moment. Maybe when we're processing, we do need speed. So let's put into this machine, first of all, the, the energy upgrades. Right, good. So as you can see, that's now going up in terms of capacity and efficiency, which you can't see. These tanks are filling up. I'm just wondering about how I'm going to arrange this. I really do need to turn this round. If I turn this round, then I want to bring the tank round and maybe the salination plant. So maybe I would be better if I bring these across down here like that. I will do that, but I will do that not on camera, so to speak. And the next thing after that, we need the chemical, in chemical infuser coming in with hydrogen. So that's... Uh, also interesting, and then we'll get out hydrogen chloride, which we put into the chemical injection chamber. And I'm going to save that until next time. So until then, bye for now.